Hey guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today I've got something really completely different to what I'm normally used to reviewing, but I'm hoping going forward into um, like this this new chapter, so to speak, of the Art Gear Guide here with me out in the studio, I'm hoping to maybe introduce uh, some more different products uh, to review. This one here, as you can see, is a Faber Castell fountain pen. Now. I, I love pens. Um, I've never really owned uh, what I would consider an expensive pen. I know some pens can go for a couple of hundred pound or you know even as much as a couple of thousand. You know, I don't know in which world anybody would spend that type of money on a pen, but I do know that there are people who are incredibly wealthy and having a really nice pen is important to them. Um, but anyway, I, I've always loved pens, and in particular fountain pens. I just love the way that they uh, behave, the way that they uh, write, and things like that. But more recently, because of my artwork uh, and because of like doing different things, like uh, watercolors and and stuff like that, and manga art, I, I've been using fine liners, but. A lot of watercolor artists use fountain pens for their line work. Like uh, if you watch a lot of urban sketchers that do all the architecture and that type of stuff, um, they do a lot of line work first, and then they go over it with their their watercolors. And I think personally, it looks beautiful, especially kind of like when it's done in that sketch format where it's it's quite haphazard looking, but it looks absolutely beautiful when it's all completed and finished. And so, I had this pen. Uh, sent out to us to to review to get me kind of like started and who knows where this will lead anyway let's get on with this uh, uh, review so as you can see here it comes in this beautiful box as with everything Faber Castell does it is just uh, well packaged beautiful well presented and you know it's just typical of German engineering and German you know attention to detail uh, there's a little leather strap here, which uh, is just to enable you to actually take the pen out of the sleeve. There's, this is just like the sleeve. There's not really any information on it. It's just a, a picture of what looks like the Brooklyn Bridge. I have no idea. It may not be. It could be any bridge for, for, for all I know. Um, once you take that out of the sleeve, you're left with this beautiful white box you, it's well made like it's a really really sturdy box chamfered edging along the the edges here and then obviously the Faber Castell name and logo in silver print um, right in the center uh, and you know just gorgeous so again we just go to this little leather strap and remove the, the actual pen from the box and just set that over to the side a uh, little booklet in here which I'm sure um, just tells you a little bit about Faber Castell and their product and how to use the fountain pen so we just set that to the side now this pen here that I have is called the E-Motion so Emotion uh, wood fountain pen and this particular one that I have is um, it's stained pear wood um, but we'll take a look at so let's take the pen out of this little packet first of all move the packaging and then we shall zoom in a little bit here and show you okay so this is a, a, a it's a beautiful looking pen it's kind of like what they call a cigar shaped uh, it's well weighted it feels really really nice in the hand obviously I haven't you know wrote with it or anything like that just yet um, I'm not a hundred percent sure kind of like you know what its weight is I can't find a specific weight to it but uh, it is a, a, a fairly weighty subject that I mean like I said it feels you can tell that it's well made so as we look at the pen we have this beautiful pear wood stained it's kind of like a, a dark brown they have um, 
like a, a red and, and a black one as well. when I say red it's kind of like a red wood one uh, it looks really quite nice as well but it, this this dark wood is it, I think it contrasts beautifully against this um, chrome plated polished metal um, we have here like a lapel clip which is really good and sturdy that is um, a really nice it's not like too loose or anything like that some of these lapel clips are just useless you can tell that this is really nice and strong and will hold up um, along the the lid here you can see it's got like I say it's got this um, chrome plated polished metal with the Faber-Castell logo uh, engraved onto it here and right down at the bottom it's kind of like this uh, chamfered um, feature along where the the lid touches the the barrel and you can see here these little ridges all the way along it and those little ridges when the light hits it it, it almost makes it look like you know the light just reflects off it in different ways and it almost looks like crystal in a certain under certain light uh, at the top of the lid here there's like it's like an indentation just on the top of the cap and same with the 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 bottom here where this again this uh chrome plated polished metal base is it's nice and it, it has this like little indentation now the lid here itself is a screw lid so it unscrews and comes out and the overall dimensions of the pen so at its widest point which would be here it's 14.6 millimeters when the the cap when the lid is in this position the overall length of the pen is 140 millimeters now when you remove the cap you can post it on the end here and it does it sits firmly in place when when the the um, the lid is posted on the end it gives uh, an overall length of 160 millimeters now it comes in different various um, nib sizes this one here that I have is extra fine I like really super fine fountain pens but um, you can get this pen in uh, f like extra fine, fine, uh, medium, and broad. Now, when you go onto their website, they'll be able to they, they will show you a list of writing, and it'll show you kind of like what it looks like, what what the the various nibs look like. But nevertheless, it's a beautiful nib here. Uh, you can see here some images of just showing you the. The, the nib all the way round now to put the ink into the pen so you unscrew here and as you can see it is an internal thread screw system it's got nothing to do with these threads here which are for the the the, the lid this is an internal thread threaded system with the pen comes the converter uh, so this allows you to um, put in whatever ink you like and I'm going to show you that in a second I will show you the the the, the way the ink works and, and how you can put it in and what have you but if you don't want to use the converter uh, you can use ordinary cartridges so I've just got some old um, cartridges here just to show you what it's how it would go in just like any other fountain pen it would just go in here like that uh, and then just it would just post on I don't want to push it down because it will end up um, activating the ink and I don't want that I've got my own ink um, now there's different when you use the converter okay there's different ways in which you can uh, fill it with ink you can get take the converter like this and you can put it into the ink jar so like take this ink for example uh, you can take it in uh, put it into the jar and just twist it 
and as you're twisting it it sucks up it pulls it draws up the the ink into the converter like that i find that um a lot messier than the way that i prefer to use to the the method i prefer to use so just let me put the converter back in there so the method that I prefer to use is by just attaching the converter, inserting the converter and dipping the entire nib into the jar and then sucking it up that way. Um, it just allows the nib to, to draw in the ink uh, rather than putting it into the converter and then uh, just the, the ink coming straight through it. Now, before we get into that, just let me talk about different inks. So, as I said to you earlier on there, uh, I use, the one of the reasons I use, or I, I like fountain pens and why I'm going to be starting to review them here on the channel, is because I enjoy doing them with watercolours, using them with watercolours. Now this ink here is just ordinary writing ink and if you use this, when you use uh, like marker over the top of it or you use um, watercolours, it will the, the ink will just run and dissolve and it will just turn your watercolour into uh, a mess. So what you need to do is use like a waterproof ink. Now I use this one here, this is an American brand, it's called Noodler's Ink, um, it's for for the size of the bottle it's not really that expensive um and like I said, you know this bottle will last me ages it's uh really i mean you can get it in all different colors you can get whatever color you like you've got to make sure that your fountain pen can can take these types of inks um and there's you know there there, there are other inks like indian inks and what have you you've got to really be careful what type of ink you're putting into your pen with the likes of Indian inks, they can clog up the nib and it can be really kind of like uh, very difficult to get rid of it. When you have a fountain pen like this, it's it's important to every now and again, just give your pen a little bit of maintenance. So with the nib, say, for, our, for when you're cleaning it up, if you just run it under some lukewarm water, it will get rid of any kind of like dried up ink that, that there may be sitting about the the nib so just just lukewarm water not like really scalding hot water or anything like that so let me just show you here the uh let me just show you here the drawing up of the ink and then i will show you how it writes so before i get started here i think it's really important that I get some paper towel ready. Because I will get it everywhere. I'm sure it always happens. Incidentally, I have another little jar here. Um, and this is uh, like a, a blood red. Which I use in one of my Lamy fountain pens. Um, and I just use it for... Uh, titles and things like that because I have my own notebooks uh, they're little Itan Italian uh, leather journals I'll, I'll actually show you one of them now uh, this is one of them here sorry just let me see my this is one of them here uh, I use these journals I know they look a little bit maybe feminine or something they don't really look like the type of journals that a lot of people would use but I love them they're, they're Italian made the paper inside them is gorgeous uh, nice heavy weight um, if you want to know more about these these journals I, I will if, if it's something that you're interested in I'll certainly do a video and I'll explain um, all about them they come in different sizes obviously and the, the store that I buy them from uh, and I haven't bought one in a long long time I bought these a long time ago uh, and they're from uh, a little store in Italy so they're they're genuine Italian um, journals and I have three of them I, I've kind of like people have bought them for me over the years for birthday this is what like I say this is one of them here 
this is kind of like an A5 size. This is another one here. This is this was the first one that I was bought. It's a little bit thinner, has less pages in it, uh, but same size. And then this one here is a lot, a lot bigger. Um, you can see there they've got these beautiful leather spines, and um, this one here's got a lot of pages in it as well. So you can see there they are gorgeous journals, really, really gorgeous journals. And I'll actually show you what the paper looks like and how how it behaves in just a second. So I'm going to get this noodlers. The thing about this noodlers is, let me just zoom in again. Um, when you buy these bottles, you definitely get your money's worth because the ink is filled right up to the very top. Don't know whether you can see that. I can't tip it over like the edge because it's right up to the top. Okay, so um, so I have the, the converter all the way down and all I need to do is just twist it like that slowly and as I'm twisting it, the, the ink will come up. So bring it all the way down again and drop it into the ink there you go I'm just going to tap that off the side Just use my paper towel here just to blot up any excess. Just let me put the lid on this before I knock it over or something. Uh, and now just to replace the barrel of the, the pen. The good thing I like about this as well is that you've got a lot of like ha hand room there for whenever you're removing the the ink and what have you. Some some fountain pens, uh, you've only got a, a a tiny little space here at the bottom to hold on to when you're dipping your ink in or dipping your uh, the the nib in. So there there is you can see the ink already coming through there. But we're ready to we're ready to test this out and have a look and like I say this just feels so good in the hand
Okay, so this is just one of the, the journals here that I was showing you. And I'm just going to do a little bit of writing in here just to show you the, the paper quality inside these journals, but also more importantly to show you uh, how the pen writes and how fluid it is and how the, the ink flows from the nib. So, So you can see there that the flow of the ink is beautiful. There's no, um, there's no, sometimes with fountain pens, when you're writing, the, the ink may not be completely fluid and you might get these little jumpy bits uh, throughout the writing. Kind of like when you're using a ballpoint pen and it's not working properly, that type of thing. But as you can see here, the fluidity of the, the ink coming out of the pen is just beautiful and works and this pen just writes absolutely beautifully. So it is pear wood stained dark, because like I said, there's different colors that you can get in this um, it is 160 millimeter length with lid posted so in other words the way it is here and it is 140 millimeters Um, capped so in other words like that it's 140 millimeters and like I said earlier on it's a screw pen so the when you replace the lid and you screw it on it's not the lid's not going to come off it's really well secured there's no there's no jiggy there's no movement or anything like that it's a really really nice tight fit and uh it, it just sits beautifully i think that's really about it guys with regards to this pen um it writes beautifully it feels gorgeous in the hand it's a it's a heavy not a heavy pen, but it's a well-weighted pen. You can tell as soon as you hold it that it's a well-made pen. Uh, you can tell as well that it is it is a costly pen. It's not... Okay, so before I got into art, spending five pounds on a set of pencils was like would make me go, oh my God, five pounds on a set of colored pencils? That is crazy. But obviously, the more you get into art and the more you understand and the more you start to appreciate the tools of the trade and things like that, you are prepared to spend a little bit more. Now, this is just a pen and a lot of people would, would question why would you spend anything more than a couple of pound on a pen? Big Barrow does exactly the same thing. This is a luxury item. There's no two ways about it. If you've got the money for it, then I think this is a pen that would be really appreciated by a lot of people. I think that the style of the pen is gorgeous. Uh, the way it writes is beautiful. The The weight and the balance of the pen with, like as it is here, or with the cap posted, or just with the cap off. The pen just seems to have a really well balanced um, feel to it, no matter what, no matter what way it is set up. Uh, the nib is really nice. Like I say, this one here that I have is extra fine, but you can get it in fine, medium, and broad. 
so it depends what type of thing you like and that's really about it i'll show you a little bit of uh you you'll see a little i'm sure you'll see a little bit of uh artwork here that i've used to pen for and you'll be able to see the uh the fact that the ink doesn't smudge and what have you but that's more to do with the ink than it is the pen the purpose of this review is just to show you this pen uh and if you want to know about prices go across to the written review of this where i will of course have prices for here the us and europe and things like that if it's a pen that you're interested in and the price isn't too high for you or anything like that then uh if you click on the links it'll take you to where you can purchase one for yourself they are i i just love fighting pens i think they've got a lot of uh character to them and i think they lend themselves really well to doing things like line and wash work with watercolors and even with marker work as well like doing outlines with and then coming back in with your markers um obviously going to a pen maybe this fancy may not be what for everybody when it comes to doing a little bit of artwork with them but again it's all a personal thing and it just depends on what uh you like uh, as an artist anyway guys thank you so much for watching this review i will be doing more of these uh fountain pen reviews and like i say i've got a few other different products coming up that i've not really delved too deep into so they will be more uh me showing you my beginner my novice take on them as opposed to um the detailed information that I can give you with regards to coloured pencils and watercolour pencils and markers and things like that now. See you all again very, very soon, guys. And thank you all so very much for your support. Thanks. Bye.